meeting is called to show our solidarity with the people of Mayo who have been engaged in a gigantic struggle with one of the most powerful multinational corporations in the world, namely Shell. Shell Multinational Oil and Gas has taken over Mayo, has divided our community, has split family and friends, have used the Gagadish corner against its own citizens. Now I think that the magnificent struggle over the past number of years, fundamentally led by the local community in Eris, has raised some of the most key fundamental points that face our society at the present time. And they are crucially threefold. Who should own and control the natural resources that belong to the Irish people? What attitude should we adopt with regard to the whole issue of environmental protection? And thirdly, how crucial should we regard the health and the safety of the Irish people and the people in local communities like in Eris? Now you may have seen recently that Shell Corporation announced its profits for the year 2006 and unbelievably brought in over 20,000 million euro from their activities in oil and gas throughout the world. Isn't it incredible then that an Irish government supposedly representing the Irish people should see fit that it wants to further enrich this massive corporation by a further up to 50 billion euro of wealth that belongs to the Irish people. Well, you were indeed great, you were indeed. Another, huh? Hello? Another major criminal like myself. <laughs> now, oh, what did, 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 you know, Joe has gone through the, the, um, the dig away of the, of the natural resources, which we, we are all aware of. The, the, the state here has done another thing to us as well. It, it, it has broken down the trust of our community in the Gordishia corner. But, but, but by making use of upwardly mobile members of the force, they have forced the Gordishia corner into a situation of, of confrontation with us. That has led to the situation where the, the, the last time we were here, with um, 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 uh, March, just after we come out of jail, there were six guards on duty to direct traffic, that was all. Now we look around today and we see what it has come to. It has come to squads, it has come to special branch, uh, it has come to paddy wagons, it has come to the whole panoply of state to look violence, it has come to a broken c c community, it has come to a stage where the normal relationship that we as a normal rural community had with the forces of law and, 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 and order uh, that we now feel we are under occupation and uh, no longer by, by uh, in, imperial forces but by forces of capital. And we regret that for ourselves and for our kids. But that, that, that is the that is the situation. That is what they have done to us. That is what MacDool, as minister, uh, acting out the orders of the cabinet. That is what they have done to, to our oh, com com community. And it is something that we, that will come back to haunt them. What they do to us, they will try elsewhere, and it will come back to haunt them and to haunt us in community as well. Now we we are our. That we have been tremendously lucky in the, the, the support we have got and the support that people have, have given us willingly. And a, a remarkable thing is the way people knew from the word go that we were, that we were serious, that what, that what we were standing for was true, 
uh, this wasn't anything to do with a couple of extra pounds here or a couple of extra pounds there. Now, we have been exposed to huge me 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 uh, me media attacks, but that is perfectly normal. It, it makes, we know we are getting somewhere when the, the forces of the state and the corporate forces of Shell, when they have to hire more and more and more and more ex-journalists, ex-chief superintendents, ex-county secretaries, ex... Exes. We know that we, we are getting so somewhere, and indeed, they probably need the money, the poor thing. They probably need the money. Remember, we're outside the GPO, when in 1916, men and women from this city, ordinary men and women from this city, came to reclaim this country, take it back from imperialism, and now, the new heroes are people from Rossport, who are taking back our resources to put up the profits back into this nation. It is not British imperialism, it is capitalism that is attempting to strangle the life out of Rossport. And just as the Brits failed, capitalism will fail again by taking the resources from Rossport. And I applaud, I am humbled by the residents of Rossport. Friends, when you walk around the streets of Dublin and you see the homelessness and the poverty, and the lack of housing. When you go to the hospitals and you see the overcrowding in hospital wards and in hospital trolleys, think, think for a moment what the profit from that oil of our country would do for these people. It would house people, it would educate people, it would provide them with health care and it would give us a decent environment for all. That's what the profit should be done with, not lining the pockets of international capitalist criminals of Shell. There should be lying garments in their country. There should be invested in the hospitals, our health care, our education and our housing. Invested in the people of Ireland. That's what should have happened. My name is Joe Tully. I'm an INO shop steward in one of the biggest hospitals in Dublin. Uh, and I'm just here to give my full solidarity uh, with, with the campaign, for the Shelter Sea campaign. Um, basically, just to state the obvious, uh, our gas and oil resources are not the only things that this government is intent on giving away to the corporates. Our health service is in the process of being privatised. It is in the process of being handed over uh, to the, uh, the, the corporate sector. Something like for every hundred uh, million spent on the uh, production of private for profit hospitals comes direct, half of it, 50%, according to the government's own figures, comes out of our taxes by massive tax incentives to the private sector. Um, just to make one point, the crisis in the health service was produced with deliberation. It was produced from the mid-1980s when successive governments set out to dismantle the public health service. They cut something like a third of our national acute beds, up to 6,000 beds, and they continued to cut those beds as we went into the 90s, right into the Celtic Tiger. That is the key source of the crisis in the health service. They know it, and we know it.